Hi friends, welcome to today's storytelling session. Today's story will be about the book Recycle by Gail Gibbons and read today by myself, Miss Brittany. Before we begin our story today, do you know what this big word recycle means? If you think you know what the word recycle means, I want you to share with the person sitting next to you if you're at school or if you're at home, someone sitting by you, I want you to take a moment and tell them what you think the word recycle means. Awesome. We're going to find out more what this important word recycle means in today's story. My next question is, do you recycle at school or at home? Awesome. There's so many different places that we can practice recycling. I recycle at home too. Do you know some items that you can recycle? If you think you know one item that you can recycle, I want you to share that item with the person sitting next to you or around you. Awesome. We'll find out more items that we can recycle too in today's story. My last question is, why do you think it's important for us to recycle? Or why do you think people recycle? That's a good thought. We're going to find out more in today's story, why people recycle, why it's important, and what you can do to practice recycling. Recycle, a handbook for kids by Gail Gibbons. More and more garbage. Every day people throw more trash away as the world population increases. More people throw more trash away. Garbage trucks come to pick it up. But where does all this trash go? Most of it is hauled away to sanitary landfills. A landfill is a place where garbage is dumped and heaps from garbage trucks. Some sanitary landfills are lined on the bottom with a layer of clay soiled covered with plastic. Leche is a powerful substance that is produced when rotting garbage mixes with rainwater. The lining of clay and plastic keeps the lechate from leaking into and poisoning the soil. It also keeps lechate from getting into groundwater, which is often used for drinking water. Decomposing trash, plastic lining, and groundwater. Bulldozers push the garbage into neat piles. Then they cover it up with dirt so that it won't smell and so that animals and bugs will stay away. Most people don't want landfills near where they live. And besides, there is so much garbage now that in many places there isn't enough room to bury all of it. Where can it all go? One solution is to cut down on the amount of trash we make. We can do this by recycling some of our garbage to make it into new things. Recycling means reusing materials instead of throwing them away. Paper. It takes a lot of trees and energy to make paper. In fact, people in the United States cut down 80, 850 million trees to make paper products each year. When the trees are cut down, they are turned into wood chips. The wood chips are mixed with chemicals and water to make pulp. The pulp is spread out on a moving screen to make a thin layer of fibers. When the layer of fibers dries, it becomes paper. Newspapers, boxes, magazines, and many other things are made from paper. When these things are through being used, they shouldn't be thrown away. Recycle. Collect old newspapers and tie them up into bundles. Tie old magazines too. Break down use boxes and tie them together. 
Most towns and cities have recycling centers where bundles of old paper can be dropped off. In some places, trash collectors pick up the bundles of paper and take them away from recycling. Bring the bundles of bundles to a recycling center, or if your city or town has a recycling pickup service, leave the bundles at the curbside, stacked neatly, or placed in special containers provided. Old paper can be turned back into pulp and made into new recycled paper, using less energy than it takes to produce new paper from raw materials. Recycling paper saves trees and forests, which makes oxygen and helps keep the air clean. Saving forests protects the homes of many animals, too. Glass. It takes lime, soda ash, and sand called silica to make glass. These three elements are mixed together and heated at a very high temperature to make a glassy liquid. Measured amounts, sometimes dyed, are dropped into forming machines where the liquid hardens to make bottles and jars. Many products come in glass, bottles, or jars. Sometimes when they are through being used, they're just thrown away. It would take thousands of years for them to biodegrade at a landfill. Instead, these bottles and jars could be reused. Recycle. An object biodegrades when it is eaten away by sun, the rain, and the wind, and by microorganisms, very tiny animals and plants. It takes about 3,000 years for a glass bottle or jar to biodegrade at a landfill. Collect glass bottles and jars, rinse them out, and put them in a box or bag. Many bottles are returnable. A small deposit is paid when the bottles are bought. When they are returned, the deposit is paid back. Most of the time, the bottles are sent back to the company that made them, where they are sterilized and refilled. Sometimes the bottles are recycled into glass. Separate the deposit bottles from other ones. Bring the deposit bottles to your store to collect your deposit. Bring the non-deposit bottles and glass jars to a recycling center. Or if your city or town has a recycling pickup service, leave the bottles and jars at the curbside placed in boxes or the special containers provided. It takes much less energy and creates less pollution to make new glass from old glass. The glass is crushed and remelted. Next, recycled liquid glass is poured into forming machines and stamped into new glass products. The sand, lime, and soda ash don't have to be dug again, which would waste precious natural resources and destroy forests and fields. Cans. Most cans are made from aluminum. It takes energy resources and creates pollution to produce pure aluminum. First, a mineral called bauxite is mixed with soda ash and lime. When the mixture is put under pressure, aluminum is left as a byproduct. Then the aluminum is heated and poured into molds to make cans. Many products such as soda and foods are sold in aluminum cans. Often when the cans are empty, they are just tossed away. It takes about 500 years for an aluminum can to biodegrade at a landfill. But these aluminum cans can be reused. Recycle. Collect cans, rinse them out, and put them in a box or bag for recycling. Like glass bottles, many cans are returnable for a deposit refund. After the cans are returned, they are sent to plants to be ground into small metal chips. These chips are melted down and made into aluminum bars, which are pressed into thin sheets of recycled aluminum. Separate the deposit cans from the others. Bring the deposit cans back to your store to collect your deposit refund. 
bring the non-deposit cans to the recycling center, or if your city or town has a recycling pickup service, leave the cans at the curbside, placed in bags, boxes, or special containers provided. The sheets are then sold to can makers to be made into new cans. It takes much less energy and makes much less pollution to make new aluminum from old aluminum. Natural resources such as bauxite, lime, and soda ash aren't taken from the earth to be used. Fields and forests are left alone. Plastic. Plastic bottles, plastic bags, plastic plates, plastic containers. Most plastic is made from molecules called polymers, which are derived from petroleum. The plastic is heated, sometimes dyed, and poured into molds. A big problem with plastic is that it doesn't biodegrade. It can last forever. Instead of being allowed to fill landfills, litter roadsides, and harm wildlife, plastic can be recycled and used again. Recycle. Collect and wash out plastic bottles. Rinse out and reuse plastic products such as plastic bags, plates, spoons, and cups. You're recycling them by reusing them again. Pick up plastic litter when you see it. Like glass bottles and aluminum cans, some plastic bottles can be returned for a deposit refund. These bottles will be sent away to be recycled into new plastic products. Separate the deposit bottles from other ones. Bring the plastic deposit bottles to your store to collect your deposit. Bring the non-deposit bottles to a recycling center. Or if your city or town has a recycling pickup service, leave the bottles at the curbside placed in bags, boxes, or the special containers provided. First, the oil plastic is clean, then it is chopped up, melted down, and molded into new recycled products. Recycling plastics saves natural resources such as oil and prevents pollution caused by the manufacturing of plastic. Polystyrene. Many products are made from polystyrene, sometimes called styrofoam, such as cups, fast food packaging, and packing materials. Some polystyrene is made using gases called chlorofluorocarbons, also called CFCs. These chemicals are harmful to people and animals. When they are burned, they create poisonous gases and also harm the ozone layer surrounding our planet. Unfortunately, it's cheaper to make new polystyrene than it is to recycle it. And there are a few useful products that can be made from recycled polystyrene. Plus, polystyrene is not biodegradable. Like plastic, it can last forever. The more polystyrene that is used and thrown away, the more garbage will sit in landfills for years and years. Try not to buy or use polystyrene products. If you do buy polystyrene, recycle it. Polystyrene is dangerous to sea animals too. It floats on the water and sometimes looks like food. When sea animals try to eat it, their systems get clogged and often they starve to death. Pick up any polystyrene litter when you see it. The more and more people learn to recycle, there will be less garbage and our planet will be a safe and healthier place to live. Recycling can become a habit that is fun and easy. Recycle. Can you believe? Each person in the United States throws out about four pounds of garbage every day. 
New York City alone throws out enough garbage each day to fill the Empire State Building. In one day, Americans can get rid of 20,000 cars and 4,000 trucks and buses. 14 billion pounds of trash is dumped into the ocean every year. 43,000 tons of food is thrown out in the United States each day. Each hour, people in the United States use two and a half million plastic bottles. People in the United States throw out 270 million tires every year. All the people in the United States make enough garbage each day to fill 100,000 garbage trucks. And only one day, people in the United States toss out 15,000 tons of packaging material. It takes 90% less energy to recycle an aluminum can than make a new one. 65 billion aluminum soda cans are used each year. The energy saved by recycling a glass bottle instead of making a new one would light a light bulb for four hours. Every ton of paper that is recycled saves 17 trees. Only about one tenth of all solid garbage in the United States gets recycled. What you can do. Begin your own home recycling center. Organize a group outing to a park or beach to clean up litter. Instead of using paper towels, use cloth towels, which can be washed and reused again and again. Before you toss six pack rings into the garbage, cut all the circles with scissors so animals and birds can't get caught in them. Instead of throwing out some things that you don't want anymore, see if someone else could use them. Try having a yard sale. Keep a rag bag. Put old torn clothes in it and have a supply of rags to help clean house or use for messy projects. When you go shopping, bring a cloth bag or recycle old brown paper bags by taking them with you. Bring old books you don't want to want to your library, maybe the library could use them. Save paper, use both sides of every sheet, use recycled paper. If more of us use recycled paper, there would be a bigger demand for it. story questions for today's story recycle a handbook for kids by gail gibbons my first question is what does recycling mean i know we mentioned it at the beginning of the story but for those that didn't know what recycling means i want you to share with the person sitting next to you what you learned the word recycling means from today's story well remember Recycling means to turn something old into something new through a process that helps us or saves us from using up our natural resources. For example, we get our paper from trees and our cardboard from trees. So if we recycle old paper and cardboard, we can help save trees from being cut down to make new paper. My next question is, what were some items that could be recycled that was mentioned in the story today? Do you remember? Cool. Remember, and say it with me, we can recycle paper, So we can recycle paper, we can recycle plastic. We can recycle cardboard. Metal. 
and glass. Paper, cardboard, plastic, metal, and glass. Awesome. And what were some things you can do to help practice recycling? Do you remember? Well, at the back of our story today, there were so many different things mentioned on what we can do to help practice recycling. Can you name one thing that you can do to help practice recycling? Cool. I know one thing that I can do is when I go to the grocery store, I can use a cloth bag or paper bags to carry my groceries. My last question for today's story is, what was one thing that you learned in today's story? Did you learn anything new? Cool. I want you to share with one person either sitting next to you or around you one thing you learned from today's story, Recycle, a Handbook for Kids by Gail Gibbons. Awesome. Every day we can learn new things and it's important that we practice and we tell others those new things that we learn so others can learn new things too and help keep the world cleaner and healthier. All right, friends, now for our after story activity for today's story. Today, we are going to make trash art. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make this picture out of things that we find from around the house, maybe around the school, or even outside to make our trash art. And this trash art is going to be about one thing that you can do to help practice recycling. Now remember we asked that in the story. So think of one thing that you can do to help practice recycling either at school, at home, or in your community. And I want you to make a picture of that one thing that you can do. So what you're going to use to make that picture is first you'll need a piece of paper and if there is something already on the other side of that paper that's cool you can use that and you're going to find different things from either around the house or in the classroom or even outside to make up your picture so this is my picture that i made and what I'm doing is I'm practicing recycling at home. So I made my own recycling center at home. And that's what I'm doing in my picture. So that's one thing that I can do to help the world by practicing recycling at home. Because when I practice recycling at home and I take my recycling bin outside, my neighbors see my recycling bin and then they ask me about well what is that and what does recycling do and when i tell them they get a recycling bin and then they start recycling at home and everybody on my street starts recycling and then everybody in my neighborhood starts recycling and then everybody in my community starts recycling and it's really really cool so Different things that I made up to you make up this picture is I had to go on a trash scavenger hunt around my house. So I use candy wrappers, which after we eat a piece of candy, we're gonna have to throw the wrapper away because we can't recycle it. Or we could reuse that wrapper and put it in our picture. Other things that you can use, so I had some scrap fabric I found in my basement. So I used that to make my dress in the picture. 
And then I had some plastic silverware, like you might get in your lunches at school. And so once you use this, you're gonna have to throw it away. But you could clean it, and I use the spoon from the plastic silverware to make my person in the picture. And then I use those candy wrappers to make my fun in the picture. Then you can use gum wrappers or aluminum foil. I used it on the roofs of my houses. I even, this is cardboard, which can be recycled, but it can also be reused. And I reused it in my picture to make my houses and my tree. So I use the cardboard to make that. And then I even went outside and I found some leaves, which I put in my tree on my art and tape and crayons. So that's all you need. Just find things that you can use to make up your picture to show one thing that you can do either at school, home, or you're in, in your community to practice recycling. Now for my older friends, I want to challenge you to not only make the picture, but I want you to write three sentences and remember to capitalize the first letter of every sentence and to use punctuation in your sentences. And I want you to write what one thing that you can do the practice recycling and if you need more to make those three sentences then you might list three things that you can do to practice recycling at home in your community or at school thank you for joining me today in our storytelling session and activity and i'll see you next time bye